Mm-hmm. Welcome back to the Technique of the Month. We're in April. Uh, we're a little late this month, but we'll make it a good one to make up for it. Today what we want to talk about is uh, preventing your opponent's achievement of the side mount. So, assuming they're passing your guard, let's say someone uh, potentially in a street fight is able to throw your legs out of the way. Last week's technique of the month, last uh, month's technique of the month was the rollover technique to prevent the person from ever achieving the side mount. The problem is, if they either throw both legs or someone just passes the guard more legitimately, what they're going to want to do is throw the legs out of the way, come in, and then potentially punch or achieve the side mount, depending on what their focus is. As they clear the legs and as they come into the side mount, you want to avoid, you want to reachieve the guard as fast and as soon as possible. The best way to do that is to brace their body, keeping the distance right here, so he don't comes in, arms fully extended, and with his hands holding my body away, one hand by the hip, one hand by the chest or shoulder area right here, both of his legs are going to slide in. One knee across my body and one leg on my back. In slow motion, check this out. And bite the body right there. From here, he protects my, his face by blocking my arms right here. So he had position, he took his hands off my hips and shoulder and blocks. And now, the trick is getting this leg out and around my back. The problem is, his foot is completely trapped across my stomach, as it should be. To get this leg out, watch his motion. Two motions. Number one, extend the body and put your foot on the ground. So his foot is now on the ground. And the second motion is to scoot your hip towards the side of the trapped foot. So because his foot is trapped right here, he's going to scoot his hips backwards that way, creating space for the foot to come out and around my back. Okay, watch this one more time. Super slow motion. So for, this, for when you practice this drill with your partner, just slow it down. Approach from your knees like this to the side mount. Give him a chance to block you while holding me away. Watch his legs slowly. Slow. He bites. Knee across the belly. One more time. On that knee across the belly right here, just make sure you don't go low flat on the ground because you'll run into their knee. Make sure you come right across the pelvis, right across the stomach, low stomach by their belt. And uh, notice how my foot, my foot hooks right there. Okay? You don't want space right there because they'll get back around it too easily. You want the whole shin across the stomach. Here, one. And this leg lands at the same time. Notice, notice, how, notice what's giving him the, uh, the energy to spin so smoothly. It's his hands bracing my body. So it's my, because without my body, he can't do that same smooth spin. There's nothing to push off of. So with his hands bracing, he actually doesn't push off the ground. His feet are off the ground and they both slide into position. He pivots, pushing off my torso. Then, at that point, he brings his hands out, protecting my, holding my head right here and blocking this arm from hitting him. Because the person will try to punch from here. Notice how he extended this side of his body, completely extended. Go back in, do it again. From here with the knee pressure, he's going to slide his shoulders back and straighten everything out. Full extension of this side of the hip and body. That'll give him space to put the foot on the ground. Once his foot is on the ground, inside my knee right here, he's going to scoot far this way so his hips move out, giving space for the foot to come out around my back. This leg over his back has to lighten up a little bit to allow you to scoot. If you keep your leg too tight to the back, you can't even move your hips out. So relax right here, have it up, hip out, and then cross. Since we're on mistakes, another common mistake is when you're here, you hold them away. As you shoot your leg in, this leg stays behind. So make sure both legs go together, like we were saying, and straighten away. And last but not least, do not ever skip this step. Always put the foot down and scoot your hip out and remove your leg. Even if your partner's leg is back, even if you don't need that step, practice that step. You still do it. Hip out. Why? Why do you want to always practice that step? Building good reflexes. Wow. Building good reflexes. Because one day, it's going to get trapped. And if you stop and you try to skip the step, you're in trouble. You lose two seconds, and that's not good. That's enough for a punch. So, what if you land on me, and like you're already kind of close? Sometimes the person, instead of you catching them on the approach, you mess up, they're able to achieve the side mount. And from here, he I'm gonna hug, go ahead, hug my neck here. It's not a bad idea in a street fight situation to keep their, to hug their neck right here to prevent the person from backing out and punching. So if they achieve the side mount, he's gonna hug the neck. Okay, from here, because there's not a lot of space between our hips, between his hips and my hips, what he has to do is he has to create the space between. So his knee doesn't fit right there, as you can see. In order to make it so his knee can fit, he's going to scoot his hips away from me at first, shooting his hips back. Once his hips are back, then he braces me, and then same thing with the leg. Both legs up and butt. Then he blocks full extension of the torso, 
Full extension, foot on the ground, hips out to the side, foot free around my body. Safe positioning. So, the concept is, we need space for this knee to come in. If the space is there as he approaches you, you're in good shape. If they achieve the side mount and we're too close, he don't gonna scoot his hips away from me so that there is space to come inside. He uses that space that he created. It's very important that when you shoot your hips out, you shoot your legs in immediately after because if you don't, your opponent will fill that space before you do. So make sure whatever space you create, you take advantage of. So from here, he braces my hip. In order to keep me kind of from following him, he braces my hip as he shoots his hips straight back away from me. And with that space now, he brings both legs, one high, one low, bites. As soon as he bites, he blocks the punches by bringing his arm over, and then he extends the torso, foot on the ground, hip out far the other way, high body lock, and full guard. What else? What if the person's holding you like really, really, really tight, like just glued to you, and you just can't move? Don't move. Don't do anything. Wait. Okay? In the meantime, when you feel them loosen up, that's time to go. Okay? That's a huge mistake. You don't escape when you want to escape. You escape when you can. And that takes practice and sensitivity. And the more time you spend on the bottom of the side mount, the better for you. Very important. This will be the last technique of the month at the original Gracie Academy here in Torrance, California. We're moving to a whole new location. It's only five minutes from the home here, but uh, the next month's technique of the month will be shot at the new home. So if you get a chance and you're in Los Angeles, please come visit us. We're only five minutes from the uh, International Airport, LAX, and we'd love to have you for a week or two of training. It'll change your life. Keep it real.